Welcome to Champions of Inspiration. We've got a great show today. My guest, Diane Armitage, was a brand new entrepreneur 30 years ago. Absolutely no idea what she was doing. Well, and then on her first day of business, she met the amazing Bob Proctor, one of the world's greatest teachers in human potential and success expert. And he chose Diane to be his writer for the next 27 years. Diane and Bob worked as writing partners, creating curriculum, programs, marketing that's truly helped millions of people transform their lives. And well, really what it's done is help Diane become a 30 year owner of a global marketing agency and actually nicknamed the creator to creators. I like this one, the secret weapon and the millionaire maker by clients such as Les Brown, Jack Canfield, Mark Victor Hansen, REI.com, the Biltmore.com, great place, by the way, uh, Remax International in Patagonia. Now, four years ago, on Bob Proctor's ur urging, the protege became the teacher. Today, Diane mentors as a master teacher at a global level, teaching entrepreneurs, wannabe entrepreneurs, and business leaders how to connect with their power and their genius that's already locked up within them to truly create the lives and businesses on their terms. Diane, welcome to Champions of Inspiration. Thank you, my friend Scott. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, it's always an honor to chat with you and, and uh, let's, let's go right to it. What was the biggest lesson you learned from being with Bob Proctor for all those years? Well, that's going right to it. The biggest lesson I learned from Bob Proctor, well, I would say the biggest lesson I learned was that I actually had all the power and I was already empowered to create and choose whatever I wanted for my life. And I think most of us are raised in exactly the opposite direction of that. We forget how powerful we are very early in childhood. And most of us never wake up to that fact again. And so Bob shook me awake and taught me that it really is about being a co-creator in this, in this planet of ours, about being a catalyst and moving things forward, creating ripples in this world any way you choose. That's awesome. So how did you go about it? I know you were his writer for 27 years, but you obviously had to take and create some of those lessons on your own as well, right? Well, it's true. I mean, you know, when we were writing every day, every week together, of course, I was bringing my life to him and talking about this and that. And I was the, you know, the, the apprentice with the Jedi master guy, you know, and he would say, well, why don't you try this? Or how about you try that? Have you tried this? Well, I would suggest that you try this. And, um, and I would do it because I remember at one point I came to him pretty frustrated and flobbermuxed. And he said, he was like, well, you're not doing what I'm telling you to do. And I said, yes, I am. And he said, no, you're not. And he said, I know you're not because things would be different right now. And he said, you need to do exactly what I tell you to do, or we're not going to work with each other anymore. And I said, okay, Bob. <laughs> so then I really paid attention and I really did exactly what he told me to do. And it's really not that complicated, but the most complicated part is standing in the belief of how much power you have. That's the thing that you really have to come to grips with and then really begin working it in your favor and for the world's favor. So that lends the next question. How do you implement that? That's a, that's a pretty big ask if you're not there. It's true. You usually have to just jump. <laughs> you usually have to jump screaming initially and, uh, and then it gets easier. So I remember there were times when I would be afraid of doing something or taking a certain action and Bob would say, okay, I'm right here on the ledge with you. Okay. So now we're going to do it. One, two, <laughs> so, you know, meta metaphorically, of course, but you know, there were times when I, I remember once we had a conversation and I had made a goal to move to Laguna beach five years before I'd been in Laguna beach for one evening on new year's Eve and I fell in love with it and I wrote it down in my journal and then I just put the journal away and I never really thought about it again. And five years later, we had a conversation when I was in the, in like a transformation space where I could move back to a transition. I could move back to Denver. I could, I could stay in Southern California. And I said, well, I really want to move to Laguna Beach, but it's too expensive. And that was like the worst thing you ever say to Bob. And so 
he said, well, if you're in your car, you're in your car now, aren't you? And I said, yes. And he said, how far are you from Laguna? And I said, well, 45 minutes. It's way, way up the hill. And he said, I want you to go there now and take, off a, take out a post office box and start forwarding your mail. And you'll figure out how to live in Laguna Beach. And so now that I was at the point where I had to say, okay, Bob, and do what he told me to do, that's what I did. I took out a mailbox, started forwarding my mail, didn't know anything about Laguna Beach, didn't know how, nobody. And then out of the blue, out of the blue, well, actually on the way home, he said, now what are you going to do? And I said, I don't know. What do you think I should do? And he said, start packing your boxes. Go get the tape, go get the boxes and start packing your boxes and start with the most important stuff first. Start with your bathroom and your office. Pack that first. So it was, you know, moving yourself into this action that is contrary to waiting for something to happen for you first. And that was really what he taught me is that you move into action, inspired action. You do whatever you can think you can do. You don't have to know how to solve the problem. You do whatever you can think you can do to let all of the energy out there, all of the support out there, everything in the universe out there, know that you're serious. And then once so you have when, that energetic when, vibration, everything begins to work. Were, were you borrowing his belief in you before you had the belief? Absolutely. That's a perfect way to put it. And he would actually tell me that sometimes. He would say, I will believe for you. Go do that. <laughs> I will believe for you. Go do that. And so how, how much of, of what Bob taught, because I was blessed to be around the man some, not obviously nearly as much as you, but he always seemed to have that in him, the next step. Mm -hmm. You know, he was always future casting, right? Vision yes. casting. He always. was always, always putting things out there uh, and then seemingly pulling them to be true. Mm -hmm. How do you guys describe his actions and, and the way that that he saw the world? It reminds me of an Ernest Holmes phrase in his book, This Thing Called You, when he talks about how you want to have that life over there and you're looking at it and you're scrabbling and you're struggling to get there, to bring there here. But if you only knew that it was a concept of mind, there would already be here. So the key is to act as if there is already here. Take whatever action you can take putting yourself in the space, having already accomplished it. And that was really what Bob did. I remember, I remember more than once, but I remember one time he got off a plane. He'd been on a plane for a long time. When he's on a plane for a long time, we always know that there's going to be a big download of new ideas when he gets off the plane. And he got off the plane. And he's like, die. I was just talking to Mark Victor Hansen. I came up with this really great idea. We're going to call it the 3% Club. And we're going to have people come out and they're going to do like these four different groups around the country. And we're going to do it once a, once a quarter. It's going to be fantastic. And I said, great. And he's like, okay, you go write the sales letter. You go put that together. And we're going to send that out. And I said, well, what's in the program? And he goes, oh, we don't need to know that part. We just have the idea. The idea is great. It's got to work. <laughs> go write that. Go write it. <laughs> that had to be a little, that had to be both fun and challenging at the same time. <laughs> well, it was, it was fun and challenging. It was fun and challenging, but you know what? It always worked. And we ended up, you know, I mean, we put that letter out in about a week's time. I think we pulled in a couple million dollars and we did these four big events and it was just fantastic. But, you know, you, it was like Jack Canfield said in The Secret, you don't see the whole, at, it's like at night driving with your headlights on. You do not right. see the entire road. You just trust that the road is there and you keep driving. You know, having faith that the road is going to continue in, to unfold in front of you. I think that's uh, being a friend of Jack and, and being around Jack uh, quite a bit. And actually, I think I probably met Bob through Jack. Mm -hmm. uh, but that is one of the lessons, you know, uh, headlights only go 200 yards. And yet you can drive from L.A. to, to New York at night 200 yards at a time. Absolutely. And, and I think sometimes... People go, oh, come on, is it really like that? And and I got to believe more than once you heard, come on, is it really like that? Is it? Oh, yes. Especially when I was setting the goal for my next quarter or my next year, and I would read it to Bob and he'd be like, 
come on. <laughs> That's not even 200 yards. <laughs> And so you would set these big, big goals and you think, I don't know how you set it so big that you don't know how all, you know, is that I can take this step. I can call this person. And as you begin to get in involved in actually creating that thing in your life, you get more passionate about it. You get more committed to it. And the ideas start coming. You start connecting dots. You start putting people together. You start calling somebody on a whim. It's just, it's hard to explain, but it's working in a dimension of, it's working in a dimension that you just have to believe already exists. I mean, Esther Hicks, Abraham Hicks, you know, talks about this. They say, you know, as soon as you come up with the idea, as soon as you grasp the idea from the ether, Wallace Waddle says the same and signs of getting rich, it's already in motion. It's already creating. It's us thinking that we're puny humans who need to catch up to it. But I mean, it's already manifesting. It's already making itself apparent. And if we are watching for that, if we're watching for it, we began to see it as Columbus, you know, when he was on the waters and he wasn't sure when he was ever going to see land, but then he began to see sticks and he began to see birds and he knew that he was close to land. You begin to see the evidence, small pieces of evidence initially, yeah. but it gives you the, it gives you that momentum to keep moving forward. And I, I think that, I think that's so important. You know, it's actually one thing that I'm living right now with the new book, Endless Connections, Creating Authentic Relationships That Matter. As soon as I started talking about it, um, friends started offering up assistance and started making suggestions on tidbits for the book and a variety of different things. And immediately upon talking to one friend, I got a speaking gig, you know, that said, gosh, would you share this idea with our folks? And so I think that concept of putting it out there and seeing the evidence, mm -hmm. you know, and, and being able to be a, a really good observer, you know, and understand what you're saying whether it be good or less than good, you know, because you know, there's, there's evidence love, on both sides, right? What I love about your book is that you first told me that you wanted to write this book as a legacy project. It was yeah. a legacy project of your perspective of how you had come along in this world. And you had this idea of how you were going to write the book. And then when you started talking to some people, it began to grow into this whole different book. And what was so great about you is that you took your ego out of it and you said, well, actually, if I include these perspectives and if I really go along this direction, it's going to be a much more beneficial book for millions of more people. And so you've just let it move along at this new rapid accelerated pace and more and more people are getting involved in this thing and it is becoming a giant legacy project for you. But you started with an idea, I'm gonna have this legacy project, and then you were flexible enough, like you said, as an observer, to see that support and ideas were coming in to make this even bigger and to make this a more important legacy project for the world. And that's well, really what you do. You start with the idea, but you've got the flexibility to say, okay, okay, I'm being guided in this direction. I'm being guided in that direction. Let's see how this thing is going to grow. I, I think that that I thank you for that Those very kind words, but I, I also, I think that that's what I experienced being around Bob that the number of times that I was as well is that there, there never seemed to be a finite thing that came out of his mouth. <laughs> it, it was, it was like an infinite thing all the time. Right. It, it was, again, that vision casting or, or going to that level. And I think it's fascinating that, you know, Les Brown has said leap and the net will appear. Right. And mm -hmm. and and I think the word leap kind of can scare some people. But the reality is take action. It, there is no second step without the first. Absolutely. And I think that that was the you know, some of the lessons that I gleaned um, from time with Bob, but I know that you have so many more. Well, now 
you know, Bob gave you this amazing foundation. What a what a wonderful opportunity to be so close to such a, a genius and a wonderful, uh, wonderful man for 27 years. And then, shoot, out of the nest. It's, ti it's time for you. <laughs> and I don't know that he did it that way necessarily. More of an... <laughs> but more of an encouragement to take the genius that you had learned and shared together and now take it to the world. So tell us what you're doing as far as being a master coach and really serving the world the very best you can from the experience that you've gained. Well, I think one thing that is so unique in my upbringing with Bob was all of the amazing authors that he introduced me to, you know, age old authors that nobody was reading anymore, but really had such a grasp on this whole science of mind. And so I continued to create my curriculum and I continued to teach with these books as leverage points. You know, these authors, amazing authors, Neville Goddard, Florence Goebel Shin, you know, Ernest Holmes. I mean, it, it goes on and on and on. And, and just being able to create new lessons every week for what I call my legendary classes. It's just been incredible over the last three years because I've seen my own growth as I've begun to really get into the material and really teach the material. I feel almost as more of a channel. And so those courses are going along very well. And now we're beginning to package smaller entities of that for, to make it more available to more people. And I'm doing more speaking now and I'm doing more podcasts like this. Because I really feel that there is a legacy of Bob Proctor in every single one of us who met him. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And in every single one of us who was touched by him, who never even had the opportunity to meet him. But I feel like it's my responsibility almost to really continue forward with a lot of that curriculum channel that he and I began and started and, and ran with for almost th three decades. So it's really enjoyable to continue to work from those authors, work from his work, you know, work from all of this and, and really teach from that advanced perspective. The thing I loved so much about him was that it was never about, it's just me, Bob, who's come up with these ideas. He always said, it is these amazing authors, Napoleon Hill, all these amazing authors, Earl Nightingale who mentored me and supported me along the way. And this is what I'm sharing, all these pieces that I've pulled together from all these different support mechanisms. And I really like that because he really studied. And so I continue to really study and my students are really studying and being embedded in that kind of material is where you really begin to see the quantum leap growth. Yeah, I totally agree. I, I've been blessed to have some absolutely amazing mentors over my career. And as I started those relationships with each one of them, I said the exact same thing every time. Give me everything you got. And my commitment to you is I won't keep it. I'll share it with my students, my clients, those who I interact with. And ultimately, I'll become an extension of you. Yes, and, that is beautifully said. Well, and, and because of that, they did. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think I've got some inside knowledge, you know, that not everybody mm -hmm. got from the same mentor. Um, but I think it also takes having the desire to want to keep that legacy going mm -hmm. and move it to the next level. I mean, do you feel that you're doing part of that as well as creating your own legacy at the same time? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, you know, his goal was to be in every country of the world before he passed on from this planet. And that actually happened just a few months before he passed. Wow. But it's um, but there are so many millions of people in all of those countries. And, and it's so important to continue to do whatever I can, create whatever I can, so that I can begin to reach those people in all those countries. Because I look at, I mean, you look at your life before you had some of the major mentors in your world. I look at my life before he came into my world. It is like night and day. I mean, I remember one of the first coaching letters I ever wrote was talking about, you know, in a year's time, you're going to look back after coaching with Bob Proctor for a year, and you'll have to look through a telescope to see your life the way it used to be. That's what I want for everybody. Yep. That's what he wanted for everybody. 
And so, yes, I think it's more of continuing on with that legacy. And, and if I can be a tool in that, awesome, you know, but uh, I wouldn't be here without him. And I want to yeah. make that always clear yeah. with any, anybody that I ever coach and teach with. It really is a continuing, a continuing energetic movement forward. Yeah, I actually had that conversation with Jack Canfield one time. You know, his major mentor was W. Clement Stone, mm. and, and he would attribute and credit uh, Stone with so many of the things that he passed along. And we were laughing one day, and I said, well, you know, some days the student becomes better than the mentor. And he kind of looked, and I said, well, I've written checks to 19 mentors. You had Stone. You know, <laughs> shame on me if I'm not better. And he goes, what? And I said, kidding jack i'm kidding <laughs> but it was but it was fun because in essence shame on us if we when we've had that close proximity mm -hmm. and we've had you know you see behind the curtain you see you know you see people on stage but the good ones are the same off stage absolutely it and they're living it they're, they're not teaching it and, and leaving it on the stage. They're bringing it back off the stage and living it day in and day out. And I know Bob did that, and I know you're doing that, which is I'm honored to be your friend because of that. You're, you're, uh, you're awesome. Well, I feel I, the same way about you. I mean, well, you know, I, mean, I, just, you know, I want to have some of that rub off, you know, I mean, all that, all that proctor knowledge. That's, that's fabulous. <laughs> um, so again, as you're working with your, clients now as you're coaching and doing all these programs is it do you have a different intent for them than they have or is does it become melded together do you kind of take their desires and and just help them get there based on the the vast knowledge that you've gained i think that it's a belief in them before they have the belief like what we were talking about at the beginning, mm -hmm. uh, so many of them have a big idea and they're even afraid to express it out loud. I mean, the first time I ever had a conversation with Bob, I blurted something out about wanting to start my own freelance writing company. And I don't know that I'd even really admitted it to myself. <laughs> and, and that's what started this whole thing. And, you know, I look at that and I say, okay, how can I believe, hold the belief for this client, whatever it is that they feel so drawn to doing in their world, how can I hold the belief for them and then gird them with all of the empowering knowledge and understanding so that they begin to take the steps? And so much of it is, you know, I always said, you know, a lot of people out there will say, you know, pray and it will happen. Well, when you pray, you are, you are beginning the manifestation process especially if you're not begging. <laughs> but when you pray, when you demand, when you make a demand, you're beginning that manifestation creation process. But what I loved about Bob was pray and move your feet. Pray and move your feet. Take some action, yeah. whatever action you know to do. And so that's one of the things that I really propel my clients forward on is where can we take some action on this? You don't have to know how to do the whole thing. You know, one of the greatest things Jay Abraham taught me, another great mentor of mine, my two greatest mentors of all time was that you only have to have one of the three things necessary to make any idea a reality. You either have the idea, you have the money, or you have the resources, the know-how to get it done. And you only have to have one of those. You can find the other two. And that's how you build out a reality on something. So as long as I have clients moving forward on the actions they know to take, and this is how I teach them, breaking it down to the ridiculous, like Bob taught me, the giant goal, breaking it down to the ridiculous so that it really looks pretty easy to get done. And then we start moving on the actions that you know to take. I think, you know, that's so true that, you know, I had a client uh, one time, she said, I'm stuck. I said, good, move. She goes, no, you, she goes, no, you don't understand. I'm stuck. I said, no, I think I, I do move. And she goes, no, I'm really stuck. And I said, well, really move. <laughs> she goes, what are you saying? I said, can you feel your right foot? She said, yeah. I said, move it. She goes, okay, I did. I said, good. You're not stuck anymore. You know, it, it sounds simplistic, you know, sometimes when you're coaching and, and you're 
sharing the wisdom that you've gained from your mentors. Mm -hmm. But the reality is the only way of getting any feedback is to take an action. Correct. The chances of taking the right action the first time are probably negligible. You know, you you plan to, you, you work to, you, you're not purposely making wrong moves, but sometimes you do. Mm -hmm. And they're just part of the learning process going through. What was the biggest that just, I coach intuitively and it just came up. What was the biggest turn that had to be made in direction working in throughout the time working and learning what you've learned? The biggest turn in direction. Was, was there anything that was just like, boy, we were going and it just, oh, we had to, we had to modify. Uh, I can think of one thing with Bob that was, oh, we're going, oh, we have to modify. And that was the second year that we got the big ship after the secret came out. (laughs) And the first year with the big ship worked really well. The second year with the big ship, not so well. (laughs) So so we made the best out of that lemonade. (laughs) We made a lot of lemonade. (laughs) But, you know, you, you... Every single time you go through an experience like that, you learn so much from the experience. I was just saying in my coaching booth, the live coaching booth I do once a month, you know, I was tell- I was reminding them, I said, remember Edison, you know, he didn't fail at the light bulb. He said, well, this is a learning experience to move on to the next step. I'm going to try for the next light bulb. And that didn't work either. But it's not that it failed. It just taught me how to move on to the next option. And so many people just stop. They're like, I can't do it anymore. It's done. I can't. It's over. Instead of saying, okay, wait a minute, how do I work my way around this to another idea? How could I possibly even get somebody else's opinion on this? So many of us think we have to work in a silo to build out the passion project or to build our business or to do whatever, instead of picking up the phone and calling somebody who's done it before, because most people are more than happy. Everyone I've ever talked to is more than happy to help and say, well, why don't you try this? Why don't you try that? Because they've all been through it too. It's not, you don't need to be embarrassed about it. You don't need to say, I'm a failure. I'm a puny human. I'm going to stop. You say, okay, how do we work our way around that idea? And that was one thing that Bob was so good at doing. He'd be like, okay, well, that's okay. How do we, it was like the 333 story that he taught in his book, uh, You Were Born Rich, where, you know, they were trying to figure out how to raise a whole lot of money for these um, you know, storm victims up in Barrie, Ontario. And they said, okay, we're putting up a big sheet. Here's, here's the great ideas. And here's the no bad ideas. Notice we're not going to write down any of the bad ideas. And if anybody has an idea that we don't think is going to work, we're not going to say that's not going to work. We're going to keep coming up with ideas until we know how to do this, how to make this happen. And if anyone says that's not going to work, we all say next And we keep moving on. We keep moving on. And that's really how he operated. He wouldn't take no for an answer. He would say, okay, well, if you don't think that's going to work, what's another angle we can do? How can we move around that? Yeah, that's awesome. You know, it's so, uh, it's true. I mean, the Edison story, I didn't fail. I simply found a way that didn't work. (laughs) You know, perfect quote. Well, you know, it's it just so relaxed. It, it's like there's uh, there's no self judgment in that. You know, mm-hmm. I don't think anybody, I don't think anybody, sets out to do the wrong thing purposefully. I <laughs> really <deep>. don't. Right <laughs> now, does that mean that people don't do the wrong thing? Oh, people do a lot of wrong things, <laughs> yeah. but I don't think they necessarily set out to do that. I, I think it becomes a you know, a little bit of the circumstance and, and a mistake is a mistake un, until you learn from it. And then it's a learning event, you know, and, and you go from there. So, yeah, you know, one of the things I was just thinking of was in the, in the ship incident, um, you know, when we all came down from that event and said, okay, what, what didn't work here? Bob, Bob was so good. He said, you know, I've been involved in so many projects this year that I wasn't really focused on this. And one of the things that he made so evident, he said, you know, when you're working on a big goal, you don't want to be working on a whole bunch of big goals at once. 
You want to be working on one goal that you can really focus on, that you can put all of your energy into before you move on to the next goal. They said, if you try to work on too much at once, you're never going to hit the target. And so he took, he said, I'm personally responsible for this because I was not focused on creating the reality of this full ship on this second round. And that's what we can do sometimes. We can get kind of tethered off, you know, and just a little thrown here and there and let the chaos of the world around us get in the way of what the real focus is. And that's really where we can fall off ourselves and say, okay, well, it's a failure. Well, are you sure it's a failure or did you really just not really give it your commitment, your decision and your focus? Well, it, I mean, that's a great lesson. Evidently, I'm, somebody listening to this podcast must have needed to hear that. Uh, like with a new book project, I don't know. The uh, Because as soon as I focused on the new book, it's amazing how things come together. Yes. In the podcast, in the things that are all wrapped around the support of that, you know, the mechanism becomes available. You know, the net appears, right? Absolutely. You know, when you, when you make those moves. Um, Man, we could do this all day. Uh, what what uh, what last piece of wisdom do you want to share with everybody here? I would say don't let your reasoning mind get in the way. Because anytime you have one of those great, fantastic ideas, remember, it's all the way up here with your imagination and infinite intelligence and energy and intuition this great idea is all the way up here and when you bring it all the way down to your reasoning mind to ask how it ain't gonna happen your reasoning mind doesn't want things to change so it's not about consulting with your reasoning mind <laughs> it's about staying up here in the imaginative space and beginning to build from that imaginative space and creating that whole movie of how that reality looks like here Love that. So how do people get a hold of you to uh, learn from your genius? Oh, well, thank you. That's so kind of you. Well, I have a website, dianearmitage.com. And anybody on your podcast is welcome to go to chatwithdiane.com. And I will give them an hour of time to work out strategy and talk about whatever they've got going on because they're your people. Well, thank you. That's very kind of you. We didn't have that set up. We'll make sure that all that is in the show notes as well. Uh, so that everybody can take advantage of it. Again, uh, Diane is a new fast friend and a going to be a longtime friend at this point. Uh, so honored to uh, know you and your wisdom and uh, look forward to doing many great projects together as we go forward. Well, I am honored as well, Scott. I just knew that w there was a great connection the minute we met. So I'm looking forward to it as well. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you all for joining us here at Champions of Insp Inspiration. Understand that this is ultimately all about you. We've been blessed to be around some very amazing people, and what we've done is take this information and work to share it. We don't want to be selfish. We want to share what we've learned so that you can take it and share it again. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again next week. God bless. Have a fabulous week.